Hell yeah, I don't turn dude. down nothing. I like doing new things and trying new things. But yeah, yeah, I'm actually a vegetarian, so I don't actually don't eat jerky right now. Damn, vegetarian right now or vegetarian always? I'm three years in, bro. So you're not smoking, drinking, or eating meat in general. No. So what are you eating, bro? Like almonds or what? <laughs> <laughs> What you trying to find out? Three, two, one, Bruno, no starts now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, maybe I don't know the buttons, bro. All right, all right. He's still figuring out the buttons, damn. Welcome to another episode of Bruno's. If you guys haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. If you don't follow the boy on Instagram, follow the boy on Instagram. Uh, I'm super excited today. I got my buddy. Daniel Dap DeShazer in the house. Thanks for coming, bro. Uh, so Dap is actually uh, one of uh, the wrestlers on the U.S. Uh, Olympic team here, or at least a, a wrestler on the on the world team for the U.S. So he's been scrapping it up on in different tournaments with some of the best, uh, maybe some wrestlers that you guys have heard. And uh, the reason I'm super excited, this is how you know Dap is a real one. Um, so Dap is like my third podcast that we ever did. Right. And your boy was having technical difficulties. He was a rookie in the game. Right. So Dap shows up, you know, I set up the cameras. I had bought brand new cameras. The settings were fucked up. The cameras would shut off like every 10 minutes. Um, so I didn't know this. So we're recording, record like an hour and a half podcast. I got like 10 minutes of video. Meanwhile, 30 minutes into the podcast, one of the camera dies. I have to pick up my phone. Now we're doing like a phone tripod situation. Uh, so I was embarrassed, bro, but thanks for coming back. Now now the boys got a system, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, it's all good. Yeah, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me again, man. Yeah. It. It's snowy as fuck outside, isn't it? Bro, somebody right on the end of your street hit yeah. the pole, bro. No way. Yeah, their car. Nice car or? Not the yeah. nicest car, but she's Okay, not. cool. I, I was hoping it wasn't the wife or anything coming uh, in. Their car's messed up, though. Yeah. Y'all got weather like this uh, where, where you've been living? I mean, were you out in Minnesota for a while? Huh? Minneapolis? Oh, yeah. That oh, shit's yeah. rough. This is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, you know, everybody's still doing it normal. Yeah. Like, like, nothing to change with this weather. But, yeah, Minneapolis gets kind of crazy. Yeah, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, I've heard some stories even from, you know, some of the schools out there in uh, that area, right? Like even in Minnesota, like St. Cloud, yeah. I heard there's like a tunnel between the schools or like between the buildings. Cause it gets so cold that like yeah, nobody walks outside. It's crazy dog. It'd be like negative 30. Damn. Like you spit. It's just like icicle. <laughs> Man, you freezing out there, bro. And now it's like, I moved into like a new crib. So like the worst thing about that is you got to shovel your damn self. Oh damn. So you out there. <laughs> Yeah, bro. For like well, an hour, bro. You're just going crazy. Your hands are frozen. You just kind of just rolling. Yeah, bro. I didn't know you had that tattoo on your wrist, bro. We got the uh, same tat. Which one? Oh, on yeah, bro. Side. Yeah, the time is now. I think I got this. Uh, I now, stole bro. it from, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, D'Angelo Russell. I saw it on his shoulder. I was like, bet. That's fucking dope. So I think I saw it once upon a time. That's wild, bro. You know, great minds think alike. I knew I messaged you, man. Yeah, bro. We got the same vibe, you know? <laughs> Let's go, man. Um, yeah, bro. Bro, shoveling's a bitch. Uh, you know, uh, the other morning, I wake up super early, right? Yeah. I wake up like 4, 30, 5 o'clock to get to the gym. And I go to shovel my driveway. I'm like, all right, let me help out the wife, right? Because I work from home, so I'm yeah, barely yeah, leaving. Sure. And I'm like, okay, going to go get a workout. Let me shovel the driveway. Bro, I'm out slide for like an hour and a half and so i only got like halfway through so i come inside to warm up and shout out my neighbor doug this dude has a snow blower oh, just man. came through and finished the rest hey if there's anybody out there <laughs> trying to sponsor some snow blowers man hit us up man. are you living alone out there you got you, you got um, a couple of the wrestlers in the rooms with you or what i live solo my other roommate he's kind of like 50 50 so he pops in a little bit but he yeah. has a lady so oh, he's nice. mainly at his lady's house but that's nice, That's cool. bro. That's nice. Is it a big house or a yeah, couple it's bedrooms? It's like a little three bedroom. Nice, cool. nice. How far it's is that cool. from uh, where you've been training out there? Uh, I'm about 12, 13 minutes from the university. So okay, 
easy drive, you know, just jump on the highway, jump right back off. So it's cool. That's perfect. What yeah. what university are you training at again? University of Minnesota. So I'm part nice, of Gopher bro. Wrestling Club. Hell so yeah. That's kind of like our main base, and they support us for our Olympic dream and our world championship dream. So there's a few of us, um, and, you know, we're just training to kind of be the best. Yeah, bro. So, yeah. And it's a tough room, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Training it, with D1 guys every day and the young guys yeah. at that, so they got they yeah. come with different energy. Yeah. So, yeah, man, you're training with the best of the best, and sometimes, you know, we fly other guys in to come train with us, so yeah, always seeking good looks. How many uh, how many people are, like, in your situation kind of pursuing, you know, future dreams after college? Yep, so uh, on our team, there's there's two others right now. So there's Hayden Zilmer and Owen Webster. Okay. Those are the other two. Hayden Zilmer, he's the number one heavyweight in the U.S. right now. Dang. So, uh I want to say he was actually one match away from placing at the Royal Championships this past year. Damn. So he's pretty solid. And he's bumping up a way. So he's really, he's coming from 97 kilos behind Cal Snyder. Yeah. And he only weighs about 225 and he's wrestling these dudes. It's 270, 280. Yeah, bro. And sometimes, I mean, even it's tough being behind Cal Snyder, right? It's like, damn, bro. I'm, I might tough. as well start eating, you know? It's tough. That's a legend in the sport, man. Is it still cutting in and out the hearing a little bit? <laughs> I'll let you know. All right, let me know, bro. Let me yeah. know. Just don't be buck wilding in the chair <laughs> over there. That's how we. That's how we lose some of the sound. No, you know? we gonna be good, man. But bro, how's uh? I saw you were at uh basically the World Cup over there, right? Y'all were wrestling. How was that? The World Cup was crazy. That was my first time being on a World yeah. Cup team. Yeah. Um, just the atmosphere and you know getting to um you know interact with some of those foreigners and stuff like that, man. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. And then you know it was all high level matches, so. Yeah. Just being able to be on the team and be involved with everyone and seeing how the process go. It's pretty smooth, man. How uh where was that? That was in Coralville, Iowa. So we had uh we had wrestled Mongolia, we wrestled uh Georgia, and then we had Iran in the finals. So Damn. In Iowa though? In Iowa, yeah. Damn, bro, that that's the one year it's like in the US. Or yeah. is it it's typically all over the place, huh? Yeah, it's typically all over the place, but I think how they do it, I think the previous team that wins the championship gets to host the event. Oh, okay. So we won last year. Some so. might be in the U.S. for a minute, you know what I'm saying? There we go. There Especially we go. if they got my boy in there, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Um, how many matches did you wrestle? I actually didn't get a match. Oh, uh, okay. So we only, had three, we only had three matches as a team. Yeah. The first team, Mongolia, that guy mm. actually didn't make weight or he didn't show up or something. So Damn. there were only two matches, so yeah, I was actually going in as an alternate. So you know, yeah, you know, I got to give the majority of the matches to the main guy. So of course, and and who's that at your way? Is that Seth? Yeah, that's Seth. <clears throat> but you yeah. know, it's it's kind of humbling at the same time, and it kind of motivates you. And you know, it's, it's kind of you kind of get pissed off because <laughs> yeah. you know you want to wrestle. You know, yeah. you ain't never been a backup before. It's like kind of salty, but yeah, it humbles you too. And it's like, well, you can complain or you can be the guy. And yeah. next year, you ain't got to worry about, you know, being in that situation. So, Bro, that is a great answer, too. Because, I mean, for those of you guys who don't follow wrestling, I mean, Dap, you're like a Hall of Famer, bro. You're a yeah. big name in the game. Dap was a three-time national champ, right? Two-time Two national two time. champ. Damn, bro. I hate, yeah. I hate when I fuck up <laughs> like that. But you were, you were a three-time yeah. finalist, right? Three-time finalist, four-time yeah. All-American. Fuck, that's so yeah. gangster, bro. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it. So yeah. five All-Americans between the two of us, all right? Go, I just got <laughs> one, bro, but my guy's got four. Shit, yeah. hey, a lot of work goes into that, man. A lot of people yeah, never yeah. get to say they were even All-American or even got to that point. So Yeah, thousands of people, you know? And that's what's crazy about wrestling, bro, is just like, uh, that's what we did it for, was just like to say... Yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? There was yeah. never, like, this higher level of, like, yo, we're about to get paid on this. Now, I guess the UFC, uh, you know, is kind of a way to get paid, right, or MMA. But for the most part, like, we're just doing it because we like that shit. We like slamming dudes, you know? You but, love it, man. You yeah, got a passion bro. for it. You got to keep rolling. Absolutely. When did you, you start wrestling? So I started wrestling at the age of four. Yeah. Um, kind of following in the footsteps of my dad and my older brother and, you know, it's kind of a family vibe, so yeah, I got to start it early and kind of had a lot of success early on, man, and just kept rolling. Shit, we still rolling to this day, twenty five yeah, years later, bro. That's so crazy. You're twenty nine now. I'm thirty. Thirty, bro. <clears throat> When'd you turn thirty? Really, twenty five, but we yeah. say thirty. Yeah. Uh, December thirtieth. I just had a birthday about oh, two weeks damn. ago. Damn. Yeah, at the end of the year too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Did you always like your birthday growing up, knowing that it's like in between Christmas, New Year's? 
Uh, it was a hit and miss. Yeah. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you hate it. Yeah. You know, it just depends. You know, you got so, family over. Sometimes that's nice. Yeah, sometimes you get the double dose, dose on presents. <laughs> sometimes your birthday present was your Christmas present. So. <laughs> yeah, bro. But yeah, I like it. Yeah. And now it's cool. You know that I'm at an older age, so I kind of, you know, Christmas and then my birthday and then New Year's. Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so. bro. And that's always nice too, because that's like the one time that's guaranteed off. You know, exactly. so it's like. Exactly. So Maybe we go out it. a little bit. I exactly. don't know. But you don't drink or smoke or anything, huh? I uh, never drank, never smoked before. That's so wild, bro. Stay focused. That's so wild. And yeah. most people, I don't think they would even know that because sometimes I'd be seeing your story, bro. Yeah. This man's <laughs> lit with the. Like, everybody's just lit, bro. They're at the club. He's throwing. Cool. You know what I'm saying, bro? The vibes are yeah. impeccable. I like to have a good time. I like to bring the energy. But, you know, when I'm out and about, it's like I work so hard, man. It's like. You got to have that time to celebrate yourself and yeah. enjoy that time with your family, your friends, and, you know, yeah. enjoy the vibe, man. Enjoy it. Is there, a, is there like, a nightlife in Minneapolis, or what does that look like? Yeah, it is. It's, yeah? it's pretty solid. It's cool. Really? Yeah, I like it. Uh, especially, like, when spring and summer come around. It's, like, yeah. a lot of events. Everyone's hosting stuff, putting stuff on. Yeah. There's always activities going on during the day, during the nighttime. So it's solid, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you guys got, uh, like, lake vibes out there? Like, people are yeah, doing, like, yeah. lake parties and shit? Or a lot of stuff on the lakes. I got to get a little bit more involved in that stuff. Yeah, bro. I like it. It's cool. But even in the winter, though, like, Hayden one time, he took me out ice fishing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was pretty solid. It was cold as hell. Yeah. But, man, it was it, fun? It was different, bro. Yeah? Yeah, like you can kind of just see the fish kind of swimming under the water, and you're just kind of looking down in the hole. And it's cool. You're just kind of like pulling them out. It's just kind of like a little string. Dang, dude. Wow. <laughs> and they're just biting that shit? Yeah, you cranking them, bro. Damn. And you probably get like 10 or something, like two hours. You just bow, bow, bow. Dang, bro. Fish are stupid, all right, folks? Fish are <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They just see a little thing float and come Man. up through. Now, did you, do you fish, like, regularly, like, not in the hole? Have you ever fished before? Like, oh, yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I've done that before, yeah. yeah. Did you grow up on that, too? Like, fishing uh, type not really. Stuff? It's kind of something that I'm kind of picking up more and more as I get a little bit older. Yeah. I like it. I enjoy it. Yeah, so you I'm like that vibe? Yeah, you just chill with the boys. I'm a chill cat, so I yeah, chill with bro. the boys. Whenever I can spend quality time with the boys or family, Yeah, I'm there. Well, dude, I, uh, my best friend, Adam is like completely different from me. Yeah. Uh, he likes, he's like from a small town, like hunting, fishing, all this stuff. And I'm like straight up city boy, bro. I've never been yeah. fishing ever, Damn, never? ever, never, bro. Yeah. I went hunting with him once. He convinced me to go hunting. We sat out there in the cold for two hours. I did not see one fucking animal, bro. I was yeah, like, fuck worst. this. I don't know how they go out and hunt. Yeah. And you just sit there and you don't get nothing. And then they'll go back the next day and do the same thing. Bro, the, uh, so I was, uh, I had a podcast with uh, Derek Wolf. I don't know if you know who that is, but he was a awesome, linebacker for the Broncos, like Hall of Famer. He was on their, you know, Super Bowl championship team. Oh, wow. um, then he went to the Ravens. He just retired. But this dude is like an avid hunter. And uh, he's just explaining to me, like, they'll go out. And if he doesn't catch something or like kill something, then he like needs to stay there until he kills something basically. That's crazy. And so they'll like hike like four miles out, kill a big ass elk or bear or something. Right. And they have to like skin it on the spot, throw mm -hmm. all the meat in bags and then just like carry thousands of pounds of meat bro, back like two hours. And sometimes you're there just like us two. We cannot carry a full elk. So we're going to have to like, yeah. Drop it off at the truck. Go back. Walk all the way back. Load it up again. And he was like, "It will. It'll take like four or five trips." That's crazy. Yeah, bro. I think that's <laughs> that's, that's a wild vibe. I think it's the process, though. It's kind of yeah. You know, I'm sure it's rewarding. Yeah, you know what it's, I'm saying? it's rewarding, man. It's like you wait for a lot of things in life and you never get them. Yeah. And then it's like boom, all that work that you put in, all that time you spent, it finally pays off. Yeah. And bro. then you think about it, what you just said, a thousand pounds of meat. Like, damn, that's yeah, gonna last you for the whole is. year. You, you a big fan of jerky and all that stuff? I know in Minnesota, is there a lot of hunting going on or what? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of hunting, but I don't really do much. Nah. Yeah, but uh, I can see you in some camo, bro. I can see you hanging from a tree or something. I'm tree. with the vibes, man. If, yeah. if, if the vibe is right, I'm going to pop out. I'll go. <laughs> Hell yeah, I don't turn dude. down nothing. I like doing new things and trying new things, but yeah. Yeah, I'm actually a vegetarian, so I actually don't eat jerky right now. Damn. Vegetarian right now or vegetarian always? I'm three years in. Bro. So you're not smoking, drinking, or eating meat in general? No. So what are you eating, bro? Like almonds or what? 
<laughs> how you get your and then you wrestle full yeah. time, bro. Lots You're a wild man, bro. 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 <laughs> for, for real though. For real. Damn. So what do you be eating? What is it? What does even your diet look like, bro? So my main thing is kind of like I'm heavy on breakfast foods and stuff. So yeah. But my main thing is kind of like making like kind of like skillets and bowls, kind of like chipotle okay. type style. Yeah. Just without the meat, so. Okay. Lots of rice, grains, quinoa, avocado, stuff like that. Lots of vegetables. I love vegetables. You don't eat eggs, though? I do eat a little bit okay. of eggs, yeah. Eggs. That's, right. that's cool for vegetarians. Yeah. Uh, vegans don't eat eggs. Okay. But I still eat eggs a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I try wow, to limit dairy wild. a little bit. but Bro, because you're jacked, too. It's wild. I know yeah. that people can't see it. You know, you, you rolled in. Thanks for making me look big, bro, right now. You know what I'm saying? You always look as small, yeah, bro. You've been in the gym, get it in. You deserve it, though. Thank you, bro. I've been trying. I've been trying. Hello, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. But damn. So no meat. This is straight out the, just the diet itself, huh? You get straight it from like diet, protein from avocados and, and okay. those kind of things. There's a lot of protein in your vegetables and stuff. And then I also okay. do a lot of protein shakes and stuff. Okay. Um, and yeah, you just kind of supplement that? <clears throat> Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah, what made you want to do that? So, um, I actually was having like a lot of problems with my shoulders, so I ended up yeah. having shoulder surgery. I want to say it was twenty eighteen. Okay, uh, this is post college, right? Post college, yeah. Yeah. So it's actually my second surgery. This time, like throughout surgery, I wasn't healing as fast and stuff. So I was like, yeah. man, let me see if I can try something new. Yeah. And one of my boys was actually doing it. One of my boys I grew up with, he was a vegetarian. He always trying. To Talk me into it a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, like nah. But I was low key, kind of like Interesting. starting to gravitate to it a little bit. Yeah. He, I just never told him I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him know. <laughs> yeah. You can't but, let him have that one. Yeah. Either. I wouldn't let him know. But um, yeah, once I started doing it, like I said, I always ate a lot of vegetables and stuff and lots of lean meat, like lean yeah. chicken and fish. And that was kind of just my basic diet. And I probably eat like steak or red meat like once a week, maybe once yeah. every two weeks. So I was never big on that anyway. Yeah. But. Once I started it, I kind of started seeing, like, big differences right away. Like, my energy was just crazy. Like, I wasn't crashing out the practice and craving a nap. So, just that energy and being able to be, like, more efficient with my work throughout the day and being more uh, progressive, that kind of stuck to me. And then, like, the recovery time, yeah, like, that was huge. Like I Really? So, you recover faster, you feel like, or what? I think I do, yeah. Yeah. I think, Bro, I think your so blood crazy. flow and everything is just flowing a little bit more yeah. efficiently. You're not stuffed up, no inflammation and stuff like that. And then, yeah, so I just, that recovery and that energy throughout the day, I call myself reading books. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Bro? Yeah. I don't read books. <laughs> but <laughs> Were you reading or were you listening? Like, At does it time, count as reading if you're listening? Uh, it's going into your brain. I, I, think, I agree, I bro. So, so my so. wife tells me that if you listen to an audio book, that yeah. shit don't count? Nah, bro, it counts. It counts, right? Knowledge is knowledge. Or else I haven't read a book in fucking 20 years, <laughs> you nah, know? bro. I, I think it's beneficial. I mean, if I try to read this book, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm yeah, going to be honest. Bro. You can't fall asleep when you're listening to something, you know what I'm but saying? But if I'm listening, if I'm in the car, I'm going to soak that knowledge in. Yeah, bro. Even if I do fall asleep, I think subconsciously you're still taking in that information. Yeah. But if I'm subconsciously reading this book, if I fall asleep, Ain't no more information going in that head. Yeah, that's true, bro. That's true. I mean, I guess, yeah, you, you can't translate that. You uh, ever, like, uh, put headphones in and listen to a book till you sleep and then you wake up? Yeah, sometimes. Just feeling smart as shit. That was kind of <laughs> one of my one of my um, my New Year's goals. Is yeah? Kind of get that, re get that um, you know, listen to something before I go to sleep. Dang. It's about 30 minutes. Yeah. And I downloaded that book last week. Yeah, The week. Alchemist or what? I haven't started it. Yeah, bro. You need but to. But I downloaded it. Yeah, bro. I downloaded it. I so, think even last time when I told you about it, yeah. uh, you were like, bro, somebody had mentioned it to me For today. Real. And yeah. that's how it's always been. Anytime I bring it up, somebody's like, I was just told to read that. Dead ass, bro. Real yeah, bro. I might have to give you a book report to do, bro, just to make sure this shit gets done. I'm going to check in on you. So I downloaded the Audible, and I think you get like one one book a month yeah. or something. or something. Audible's like, full of shit, bro. I hate Audible like low-key. Yeah. So I just now got to the point when I had yeah. like a new credit. Yeah. So I downloaded that one because I had been reading a different book. Yeah. Uh, a time. That shit's too slow, though. Like, yeah. whoever works at Audible, like, y'all need to figure that shit out. Bro, <laughs> I downloaded that shit. There's like, you can't get new credits. It's yeah, impossible. Like, 
Like, what's the hold up? Yeah, like, that's what I'm let, saying. Let me pay for new credits. <laughs> exactly, I'm trying bro. to learn. I'm trying to advance in life. Exactly. It's all good. We're going to get it done. Yeah, bro. One book a month. So I just listen to it straight up from, like, iBooks. I'll just, like, download it. Oh, uh, gotcha. Um, and sometimes I'm just reading random stuff. So, you know, I'm big into, like, meditation. Yeah. Um, and there's just times in my life where I feel like I'm very intuitive. Um, you know, and all that stuff kind of comes from, like, you know, I don't know what people believe, right? But I kind of believe in like, you know, being able to open kind of like your third eye, right? Um, right? And just this idea of like how you process information, increasing your intuition, that all comes from like awareness and meditation and being able to like clear your mind um, just because we're all so connected, right? Sometimes yeah. people forget. It's like we're very powerful creatures. I don't think we know how powerful we are. Bro, we're like literally like, living gods almost like the 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 abilities that some people are given yeah. you know and sometimes just because we're living in this world influenced by all the dumb shit we're not able to process that info you know Bro. The manifestation that some of the things that I manifest is kind of crazy and scary, yeah. bro. Bro, tell like, me so, tell me so. I got a couple of stories for you too, bro. Like, bro. It's outside of like yeah. other things in my life. I'm just use wrestling cuz I'm you know, but anyways, some things I manifest and like, I can watch a guy on film, break yeah. it down and then like, I'll never watch him again. Yeah. And then I'll just be like, I'll see him every time I see him. I'll just be like, he's lacking that area. Yeah. I'll just manifest it and manifest it and I'll be like, I know I'm going to catch him there. Yeah. And it happens. And yeah. The like, exact man. area. Yeah. The exact area, bro. Yeah. Exactly how I pictured it. And that's just Dang. one example, but there's so many other examples, and you just be like, man, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. Yeah. And it's like, boom, it happens. Well, dude, one thing um, that's even so crazy, and I can think of like that. So, and you can start like recognizing manifestation when you're aware. Yeah. Um, and I've been like getting in this like manifesting mode because it kind of like ebbs and flows. Being in that, you know, like flow state, that yeah. state where like, you're one with the universe. Everything you're doing is like exactly what you should be doing. Facts. That's tough because it takes ritual, right? So you got to be like, okay, these are all the things that I should be doing. So I should be waking up early. I should be meal prepping. I should be, should be, should be. Yeah. And you're never in that flow state, I feel, at least for me, until I'm like doing all those things. Um, and that's a process of like I wake up today and maybe I one of my goals is like don't snooze my alarm. Yeah. So if I snooze my alarm, I've already kind of like lost that battle. Yeah. But I have like a hundred other things that I'm trying to keep up with. And once I'm able to like every single day work on those things and start doing them all, right. that's when I feel like I'm the most powerful, bro. I can literally like make anything happen. Like yeah. no joke. No, um, real. But even like when, when I can tell that I'm like getting into that mode, it'll be random shit, bro. So I was driving back from Denver the other day. And uh, I'm just like, what should I do? I'm asking myself. And my inner self was like, eh, throw on some Joe Rogan. Like, just listen yeah. to some shit. I'm like 20 seconds into Joe Rogan. And uh, literally, bro, I'm like going to merge lanes. And Joe Rogan has like built this like uh, land cruiser. He's just talking about his car. Yeah, yeah. He literally, I go to turn lanes and he's like about to mention the car. Bro, the moment he says land cruiser. The car, like I'm literally merging and I'm reading like the car. It just said Land Cruiser. I'm like, he said it and I read it. And That's I was like, crazy. I'm tripping. Then I get home and I'm telling Jordan about a, a buddy of mine, Grant. He's fighting in LA. He fights for Bellator. Okay, nice. And uh, his buddy's setting up all these events and his name is Taryn uh, Hasselbeck. So I've known him a long time. And I like literally am telling her, yeah, so... You know, Grant's buddy Taryn is setting up all this stuff. And she's like, who's Taryn? And I'm like, I go to explain it. This dude just calls me. I haven't talked to him in a year that's and crazy. a half, bro. And I'm just like, okay, some, something's up, right? So that's what kind of just pushes me into like more meditation. Right. Reading about this like third eye. How can I stay in that like flow state? And one of the things I'm learning, bro, a lot of it is like diet, yeah. what you put in your body. You know, like smoking, all that stuff like it's almost like clogs like the purity of your flow. Man. You know? Clear mind and clear vision is everything. Yeah, bro. That's yeah. wild. Do you meditate a lot? Do, do you do any of that stuff? I don't, but it's something I want to get yeah. into, but it's something I haven't just like, 
yeah. take it too serious, you know. Yeah. I mean? But I think it'll be beneficial for me. Right, you definitely should. Has anybody ever like told you like how to meditate or a certain way to do it? Not really, to be honest. Yeah. Uh. Well, what what I do, and it works for me, right? But I go to the gym. Um, every time I go to the gym, I drive and I'm listening to an audiobook. Then I get to the gym, I work out. After I work out, I meditate for five to ten minutes, depending on like what I feel that day. Mm. In the sauna, though, so I'll sit in the sauna. But truly, like. Um, you just focus on your breathing and nothing else, right? So, like, yeah. you'll sit there. And I like to sit in, like, the little yoga stance and everything, like, feet together, yeah. you know. Um, but, I like, just breathing in, breathing out, yeah. you know, breathing in. And I just, like, try to think of my breath if I need that help to only focus on it. Right. Um, but what I've been learning is also when you meditate, there's this, like, uh, sound that is like a heavenly sound, right? But it's basically like, um, right? right? So what I'll do is I'll breathe in. And then when I breathe out, I'm like, um, right? Breathe out that way. So do you like, you'll go to like YouTube, listen to the sound, or is it just like... I just do it in like... That's just you. Yeah. Just do it on your well, own. I'll just do like that sound over and over. Yeah. And it's kind of weird because sometimes people are in the sauna and shit, but I'm like, fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if I got there first, you know? And that's the just, thing, man. We we yeah. always focus on other people and what they think. Yeah. Like, fuck them, bro. Like, yeah. you're trying to get to get to where you want to be and do what you want to do. So we can't worry about nobody else. But bro. that's what meditation is, right? Like, yeah. throughout the day, your mind's just throwing ideas at you. Right. And most of those ideas, like, most people have the same ideas every single day. 90% of your thoughts are the same one as yesterday. Right. And so if you can, like, focus on your breathing... And every time a thought comes in, you know, you might go like in a little like thought trance, but then you got to bring yourself back. And the more you get in the habit of like pushing those ideas out, the easier it is to even focus on yourself, no, you know, because throughout the day, like focusing on yourself isn't just doing what's best for you. Yeah. It's even like, can I control my mind right now right. to actually hear what dab needs to be doing you know what i'm saying sometimes that's the hardest thing controlling your own mind yeah bro. your brain to tell you some crazy shit and it'd be <laughs> negative yeah bro. Like, uh, like just give up bro yeah it's getting hard bro just yeah. give up you gotta be like no well bro. even with wrestling right like yeah. i feel like a lot of matches even you know you probably didn't lose that much but like even the matches i lost i like knew i was gonna lose in my head, like, as I was giving... So I might be up, like, five points. Yeah. And I'm like, what if he takes me down? What if he and takes me yeah, down? Boom, it happens. <laughs> boom, it happens. Exactly, and bro. Like, oh, and you're really freaking out. Your <laughs> mind is telling you all these negative things, bro. Yeah. Can't cancel it all out, bro. Don't listen to it. Bro, you need to meditate. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm and you need to read this book. I'm going to be <laughs> on your ahead. ass, bro. Stay I'm going to be texting you. you. I like it. I like yeah. accountability. So but it's a on. crazy story too, bro. It's almost like you'll see a reflection of yourself in Santiago, who's the yeah. main character. Um, you'll, you'll just like it, bro. It's yeah. like finding your personal journey for sure. Uh, you definitely saw me last time. So yeah. it's been on my bucket list for sure. Yeah. For what are you reading right now? Um, Atomic Habits. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I've read that, bro. Yeah. You, you like that a lot? I do. I'm not finished yeah. yet, but I'm like halfway. Yeah. But I like it. It's basically, you know, it's habits. So. Yeah. It's helping you attack those habits and kind of just form those habits. and kind yeah, They of, compound, right? Yeah, if you do it every day. Compounding. And then even like when you're wrestling, it's, I'm starting to think, I'm like, damn, I got to make that a habit. Or doom, I got to get rid of that habit. Yeah. yeah. So it helps you with everything. It's life, man. Yeah. Life. So. Well, even, uh, you know, e even with wrestling in tough practices, right, it's very easy for us to like slack on, you, exactly. you know, if they're like drilling <clears throat> Double legs, right? Like you're set up to a double. Exactly. And you just start like going through the motions, you know, and you exactly. start picking up like a little bad habit here, bad habit there. You got to gotta cancel it out. Yeah. And it's crazy how that kind of compounds with what we were just talking about, just having a clear mind. Yeah. And you'll be like, you know, things start getting tough and you stop moving your feet or something during wrestling. You'll be yeah. Like, oh, that's a habit I got to stop. You'll remind yourself just because I've been reading this book. Yeah. But also now it's doing the same thing what we just talked about, your mind canceling out that negative energy from your brain yeah so tell yourself good things so one thing for me is like even when you get tired or when things start getting tough i just tell myself man uh good energy yeah strong energy show strength yeah know? so even when it's tired show strength and then you know it becomes a national championship match yeah bro things get rough out there you get frustrated yeah. show strength though yeah bro staying tall big chest 
know, good positive body language. So yeah, and that just comes from even like coaching yourself. You know, that's exactly. that's where I think people become great. Yeah, you know, you probably see it in the room too. I mean, you're training with, you know, Jordan Burroughs, Kyle, exactly. Sutton, like some of the best dudes to ever do it. For real, you know, yeah. how much have you learned from just being around that group? Uh, you know, in the last couple of years, man, that's amazing, bro. Yeah, like, it's crazy because you get around guys like like those guys. Yeah. And it's like any other sport, I feel like some of those top guys, maybe they're not so graceful with just giving you their knowledge. Yeah. But wrestling is different. It's a brotherhood. So yeah. you, know, you get to pick JB's mind, and he's giving you everything that he's got and whatever he feels is beneficial for you. So it's just been great, man. Just being around them and seeing how they train, for one, is amazing. Yeah. And then getting to pick their brain is amazing as well because, man, it's just making you jump levels. Yeah, bro. And then – Sometimes they believe in you more than you believe in yourself too. Absolutely. Like, I know JB kind of reached out to me after um after trials and was like, "Bro, like, bro, you're good, bro." Like, yeah, bro, that like, must be crazy. That must yeah, be a crazy, crazy text bro. to get. Like bro. he called me, bro. Like I'm in bed at like seven thirty eight in the morning. He's like, "Bro, Damn. you got it, bro. Like you had that, bro. Like you yeah, keep going and just getting like getting that like." That's Man. wild, bro. You're like, oh, I got to really turn it up now. Well, I told you I saw him. Uh, the whole team was at church, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, bro, I'm not like one of like yeah. fanboy. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, bro, JB is like the truth. I've been watching him for so long. And he was there, bro. And it's just like I'm here with my wife, right? So yeah. I'm like man of the house. But at the same time, I'm like. Oh my god, that shit! <laughs> should can I go get like? Should I go get a picture? Should I ask? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So I can't even imagine because I mean we're from the same like age group, so right, right. we've seen that come up. You know, this guy going from like, you know, wrestling in college and even at the college level was probably yeah. not like the highest of the high compared to you know some of the people that were doing it back That's in the right. day. But to see him like flourish, you know, and especially. I feel like he kind of proved that the prime is like kind of a different age group. Oh yeah. You know, like 10 years ago, if you were 30, people are like, okay, tail end of your career yeah, kind of, but now it's like your prime, bro. Yeah. How, how much better do you feel from college now that you've been like, just continuing to do this shit? It's crazy. I feel like I've gotten a lot better. Yeah. I mean, just, and wrestling is all mental. Yeah. It's mental, it's confidence, man, and then just executing. Yeah. But so many, like, tactics that you've learned since yeah. graduating college, just little bitty tactics. Yeah. Little bitty strategies throughout. Like, you don't even think about that in college. Like, yeah. you're really just out there wrestling. Yeah, you're just fucking doing something. And now it's like, you know? man, little tactics, you know? Yeah. How can I set this dude up without him knowing? Yeah. It's kind of an illusion. Yeah. But, man, I've gotten so much better since college, and I'm continuing to get better. And it's yeah. crazy. It's like, I just turned 30. Yeah, that's wild. Did you have, like, kind of, like, a 30-year-old, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, fuck, I'm about to be, like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like a midlife, not midlife, but, like, almost halfway midlife crisis. Like, damn, I'm old, bro. I'm 30. Imagine, set like, I remember being in high school, bro, and I thought 30 was fucking old. For real. And now I'm, like, 27, about to be 28. I'm, like, bro, I'm on the door, on the cusp. And my wife's thirty two, bro. So like we about the same age. I'm oh, living yeah. a I'm living a thirty year old life, you right. know, just nah, the average real. right there. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, nah, that's bro. Crazy. I think I got stronger when I turned thirty though. Really? Like yeah. some real man strength or what? I think so. Yeah. I think my mind got a little stronger too. Yeah. I think now it's like, all right, bro, you thirty, like, yeah, like you what? get your shit together. You bro. can't fuck around no more. Like you yeah. thirty. Like yeah. what? you gonna let these little kids get you? Yeah, bro. Nah, it's not happening. Yeah. So it's a different motivation now. And you know, like you say, you kinda think you're on your tail end, but I'm kinda in my prime, so it's no, like, bro. Absolutely. It's like the time is You're now. just getting started though. Yeah, time is now, the bro. Time is now. If it wasn't now, it's definitely now. Yeah, shout out D'Angelo Russell. What yeah, a sick time. He probably took that from someone else too. So he it's like did. we all sharing, bro. We all sharing. It's all good. Bro, we all family now. So what are you doing here in Springs? So we got a national team training camp here at the Olympic Training Center. So yeah. we actually uh been out here for about a week now and we got about two, three more days. So nice dude. Just out here training and preparing and getting ready. So I'll actually compete again in uh first week of February. We'll be headed to uh, Croatia for the first ranking series of the year. Okay. So, yeah. That's wild, that. bro. Have you ever left the country yet to wrestle? Have you ever wrestled yeah, yeah. somewhere else? I've been a few countries, so I've been yeah. to Cuba twice. Um 
I went to Poland this past summer, and I've been to uh, Istanbul, Turkey. Okay. And COVID kind of messed up some things. We got yeah. like two, three tournaments canceled in, which is kind of crappy. But yeah, I've been a few places. So. I was wrestling in like uh, Cuba. What were you out there for? Um, so we actually went to Cuba in February. So they just have like a, a Cuba tournament. It's pretty solid. Yeah. So you get to wrestle a lot of athletic Cubans. Yeah. Um, they're scrappy. They're fast. Yeah. Man, it's it's good. Cause it's weird, huh? It's like a different. Man. Type of wrestling almost. It's like you're wrestling yourself. Like, yeah. I don't get to wrestle athletic fast people every day. Yeah. So when I go out there, it's like, oh, snaps. You yeah. got to be ready. And the U.S. has a different uh, type of wrestling, right? Like, even yeah. here, you get guys who aren't necessarily, like, athletes. Yeah. Like, they are athletes, of course, but they're not, like, athletic builds. Yeah, like, yeah. you and I are kind of built the same where we're, like, explosive. Like, yeah. you could have played a different sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah. explosive enough. But, like... Even like Seth Gross, for example, right? It's yeah. not like this dude's like deadlifting a shit ton of weight, right, like right. you know, but fucking freakishly good wrestler. Yeah, Same sure. thing when I went back to Brazil, like I'm like, oh, everybody's just stacked, bro. Right. This is crazy. <laughs> you, you know? Right. It's, it's a different like body type even. Yeah, it's different, man. What about Poland though? Poland, so it was a little bit of everyone from everywhere. So yeah. it was pretty solid. Uh got a few good matches out there. What was that cool. tournament for? Just another, like, just it random was tournament? kind of just a random tournament, yeah. Just yeah. Get, get some matches in over the summer. But it was cool. Uh, Instabool was cool, too. Instabool was a real tough tournament, so it was pretty yeah. solid as well. Um, that whole side of the country just wrestles uh, crazy different, huh? Yeah. Is that Cash? What's he doing, bro? <laughs> Sneak it in here. Damn. But yeah, no I, Cuba was cool though, man. I think that's probably my favorite one so far. Yeah. Um, for one, it's snowing in Minneapolis in February. Yeah. So, so then you just started hitting you the get beaches. Get to go to Cuba. We on the beach. It's eighty five degrees outside. You get Dang, to mingle with bro. the people. The Cuban culture, you know, they're so happy, but they don't have anything. But yeah. man, you wouldn't be able to tell. They're just so friendly and happy and yeah. so welcoming. So it's a good experience going out there and stuff. How's your Spanish, bro? You got some none. <sighs> Damn, bro. Not only bugs, but you probably need a little Duolingo, a little, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I got a little Spanish, but yeah, bro. I ain't going to get too far with it, yeah. but I can mingle and find my way around. Like I, I feel like something. if you drank a little bit, you know, you'd probably let it let Think it so? loose a little bit more. I don't know, you know? Uh, so I, I took six know. years of French in, in uh, high school, yeah, um, like middle school into high school. And, bro, I thought I had lost, like, all my French. And then, you know, a couple years back, like a year or two ago, uh, I had some drinks out downtown, took an Uber. The Uber driver was from Africa and she spoke French. Mm. And I thought I had forgotten all my French, bro. And yeah. I was just letting it loose. Like I talked to her for like 30 minutes, bro. Not a single mm. word in English, just straight French. And I was mm. just like, damn, maybe I uh, turn up a little bit. I know some more languages, you know? Yeah. But I speak Portuguese, obviously, being from Brazil. Yeah. And um, after I had that podcast with you, I think we were talking about it earlier. That was like the beginning of me kind of like going back into wrestling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think even having you on there, bro, kind of like inspired me to keep wrestling. I was yeah, like, damn, sure. bro. Why not, bro? It's all can, attainable, it. you know? Yeah, it's right yeah. in front of you. If it's meant for you, it's meant for you. Go snatch that shit. Yeah, bro. So I, I went back in October. Um, I ended up winning like the freestyle national tournament yeah, yeah. and uh, same thing. Thanks for us. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, but same thing, bro. Everybody was like different type of wrestling. Yeah. Everybody was explosive, but it was like, I also had like a different type of technique. Like, you know, you could tell that they learned like a Brazilian type wrestling yeah. or a lot of ours comes like from collegiate and some of those stuff. Sure. Uh, so it was cool, man. And, and I kind of like, you know, your boy kind of walked through it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, uh, you, you know, I I went unscored on and just kind of like Damn. tanked everybody. Yeah, bro. so your boy was you feeling nice, there showing bro. out there. <laughs> exactly. So so, I'm, so what's next for you? So I'm going back in March, okay. and it's kind of one of those tournaments. I think probably a lot like the one you're going to, yeah. um, but this is more of a. This would be like the qualifier to be on the Olympic team that goes to Pan Ams. Oh, in, so this uh, is kind of like your trials process. Exactly. Uh -huh. So this would be like the first Olympic trial. Yeah. Except this one qualifies you, at least their way, to go to Pan Am's in uh, May. To represent their team. Exactly. But I, I'm not going to be able to go in May. I already know that just because uh, me and the wife are pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And that's when she's due, like literally that weekend. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I'm just trying to go out there and be like, yeah, you still let him know. I'm on the boss. team, and then yeah. I'm like, all right, take the other guy. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? Let him know. And then the other process for us, obviously, you could go to the, you know, go to Worlds, play yeah, top bro. five. I might do that. I'm not. I don't necessarily know. I might try to go the Pan Ams route, you know, yeah. and uh, just qualify for that Pan Ams. And there's another tournament for that. Oh, so cool. the way it works, it's not like you get on the team. It's like there's a qualifier for every opportunity. Oh, every event. You know what I'm saying? Qualifier. Yeah, every event has like the Brazilian qualifier for it. So I could just kind of like line it up, you know, chill here, yeah. go back over there. It's not bad though. Yeah, cool. bro. You might have to come out on one of these trips. You ever seen Brazil or not? Never been. Dang, bro. You're missing out. I'll roll, bro. Yeah, I'll show you around, dog. Let's go. We'll get some Portuguese going. Yeah, let's Uh, go. But, dude, I did want to thank you, too. So, shout out to Dab. Dab put me in contact with James Green and some of the people on the Olympic uh, training team, bro. And I live here in spring, so now your boy gets to come through. Yeah, man, get you some high-level training in. Absolutely, bro. Sure. Absolutely. How, uh, as far as your training process goes, I've always thought that there's, you know, kind of a balance in like learning and picking up from the people above you. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I always feel like I learn more when I'm teaching, you know, how have you found that balance, uh, you know, in life, Definitely. obviously you're at the, at the university, but yeah. do you do more coaching outside of that or anything? I do. So, um, Obviously, just being in a room with the university guys, so that's part of why they have us. Yeah. Is to kind of be mentors. Like a trade-off a little bit. Yeah, a little trade-off. So we get to work out with them and stuff and then give them back a little bit of our knowledge and stuff, help them improve. So yeah, that's just like an everyday coaching, just off the strength of just who you are. So yeah. It's just naturally I always want to help someone get better. Yeah, bro. So just helping them with that. And then uh, I also coach at a high school, and then I coach a kids club as well. Dang. Um, Centennial Youth Club. They're pretty solid. They kind of... Uh, Kind of got me a little bit. Like, really? Yeah. I'm yeah, they got to, your heart a little bit, bro. They do. How? Uh, how? What's the age range on that? They're um, mainly like third, fourth, and fifth graders. We have okay. a few sixth graders and a few second graders. Dang. But yeah, I like that age group. They're pretty solid. They work hard, man. They yeah. want to be there. They want to learn. And they're excited every day. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, dude, little kid tournaments are the best too. You just see like are. the wildest things, bro. Yeah, you know, crazy wrestling dads. They got those in Minnesota. Or what? Is oh, that definitely. an everywhere thing? Everywhere. <laughs> well, you gotta realize Minnesota's probably one of the top top uh, states for wrestling. Yeah, so they're crazy. Yeah, I mean, bro. during the winter, you're not outside playing sports or basketball. You're like, just wrestling. You're wrestling, bro. There's something about wrestling dads, bro. That's like, you know, that's why even when I think like, should my kids wrestle? Yeah. I'm just scared I'll turn into, like, a crazy ass. Like, I've seen fights break out. I've seen, like, you know, dads fighting dads. I've yeah. seen, like, dads fighting moms. <laughs> I've seen kids, like, swinging on people, you know? It's crazy, bro. But yeah. I think coaching kids always helped me a lot because not only do you got to break it down, but you got to break it down to the smallest possible yeah. and then keep it simple with them. Yeah. And then you realize, like, some of the things about yourself and how you wrestle and then how you can elevate it. Yeah. And then... You know, some of those kids, they're not strong enough to do certain things yet. So now yeah. you got to taper it to to their body type. Yeah. And they're not all athletic like me either. So now you got to taper it to their style. Yeah. It's and meanwhile, just, you're like learning. You've, you've never broken it down that yeah. many ways, huh? You got to break it down. A lot of things for me just comes natural. Yeah. And then you're trying to teach it and you're like, oh, you don't have that natural feel. Yeah. So now you got to teach it. And then you yeah, got to make awesome. them get repetitions. That's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. I'm starting to actually really enjoy it a lot. Yeah, you're like living it, bro. It's all wrestling, huh? Twenty four seven lately. Yeah, but you know you gotta kind of yeah. separate yourself a little bit and find some other hobbies and stuff. And, yeah, you know, keep your mind free. Do you feel like uh, has it been like uh, lonely at all since you've been on this like next level path? Because I feel like you know when you're in college, you got your whole squad, all this stuff, and you probably do. Yeah, y- you know, but you kind of got a goal that's like so much different. Even though it's wrestling, it's, like, different than all of your friends doing yeah. other shit. No, for sure. Especially as you get older, it's like, man, yeah. your friends are starting to do other things, have kids, get married. Yeah. And then... You're run, out here slamming motherfuckers, yeah. And you're still wrestling, yeah. trying to accomplish your goals. Like, so many yeah. people give, gave up on their goals at a young age, and it's like, man, you're still rolling. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's loving when you go back home, because people still, they show you love and motivate you and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's definitely lonely, man. Um a lonely sport. Yeah, bro. even being attached to the college guys every day, it's like 
like you say, they're your teammates, but we have different goals. Like, yeah. they're trying to be the best in college. I'm trying to be the best in the world. Yeah. There's two different, kind of two different sports. I mean, you got folk style and freestyle, but it's still the same, under yeah. the same umbrella. So, yeah, it's very lonely, man. You know, you get to be away from your family a, a lot. You see yeah. your family only two, three, four times a year. So, and you're from uh, Nebraska originally, is that? Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, is that where the whole fam's at, too? That's where the whole family is, yeah. Yeah, how often do you get to see them? Um, it's not that bad. Probably three times a year. Oh, nice. But, you know, I'm in Minneapolis by myself. Yeah, bro. So, it's lonely sometimes. Yeah, you, know? you got to FaceTime, like, FaceTime. the parents and shit, you know? Don't have phone. You know? Yeah, Man, bro. Takes a few, few little trips in between training, you know, when you get back from overseas trip, you got to find a little few days. But it gets lonely, but, you know, yeah. for your for your goals. Yeah. It's those sacrifices you got to make to get to the top. Well, dude, um, you know, I, I don't know how many, I, I'm sure a lot of people know this, like, you know, within your kind of uh, groups and stuff, but, like, Dap's on some business shit, bro. I, I know oh, yeah. you always got these ideas. You got some stuff cooking. And, uh, I have some ideas. I have no doubt, you know, as I explained to you even last time, um, bro, it's the same shit. Yeah. Like wrestling and anything else in life, it's just like the exact same shit. Yeah. So you just do it, and then you do it, and then you're like, oh, I fucked up, and then you just go and fix that piece. Yeah. And now you're running like hitting double legs over here, but then come like on. come back, fix the setup real quick. All right. Now you're, <laughs> so what yeah. what have you been getting involved in, bro? You still um, hustling the machines and all that? I or? still am, yeah. I still yeah. got the vending machines. So I'm actually looking for a new location right now. Yeah. Trying to branch out from build it a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the vending machines got a little location there. The business is going, it's decent, yeah. it's going all right. I think once you get a, a new one in a new location, I think things are kind of elevate a little bit more. Yeah. Um, just doing that, building the business credit and stuff like that, um, making sure everything's organized the right way. And then, um, like I say, trying to continue to grow that. Um, getting dibble and dabbling in some Airbnbs with one of my yeah. boys and stuff. So just trying to elevate that and get that to the next level. You know, obviously grow that and, you know. It's tough, bro. It's tough when you yeah. don't have, like, you know, all day to do some shit, too. Even me, like, my life right now, I'm, like, trying to find time yeah. to wrestle. I mean, Brian was calling me, like, six, seven times. You called me, but I'm, yeah. like, in yeah. meetings, bro, back to back, and I'm just texting him, like, you know, literally live my entire life out of that room you just saw. Yeah. Uh, and then it's always, like, where can I find room to do the shit that I love? Because, yeah. honestly, even with wrestling, bro, like, regardless of the accolades, I just like, like this shit, you know, yeah. I just like what it does to my mind. And if, if I'm not wrestling, I'm like angry a little bit. I'm like yeah. on edge, you know, like if I'm not yeah. getting that type of workout in, I can lift and shit. Yeah. But it like, if I'm not doing that chest move, it's almost like my brain just starts yeah. like swelling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. bro. Well, that's different. I'm think, fucking pumped though. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same in that aspect, but I think, the business and stuff, I think yeah. that's what kind of frees my mind. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of lets me be away from wrestling. So yeah. I would just be in a room doing research and figuring stuff out or talking to one of my boys about business. And yeah. It kind of gives me a different thrill. It's a different adrenaline for me. Yeah. And I like it because not only is it, you know, it frees my mind, but it's also set myself up for the future. And, you know, yeah. hopefully we can pass things down generational. So it's cool, man. Absolutely. Where did you feel like you grew up with? Uh, Cause a lot of it too, you know, I was a financial advisor for a long time and right. you, you know, I didn't grow up with like the right view on money or even like the right financial blueprint. Right. right? Uh, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, people don't talk about. Right. Um, sometimes it gets passed down, but like sometimes our parents don't know. Yeah. yeah you you sure. know, and instead of, uh, like they pass down what they know and sometimes that could be limited, you know, Most definitely. um, where, where do you get your knowledge? I guess what do you read some books or is it just like feeding off of people that you see that are, are doing some of the right things? I think it's just kind of being in that environment. Yeah. So surrounding yourself by the right people and just being in those conversations and having those conversations. But to be honest, I'm a YouTube head too. Yeah, so man. I'll be on YouTube and I'll just run yeah. into something yeah. and I'll just dig deep. Yeah, go or, down a rabbit hole or I'll go down a rabbit hole. And to be honest, yeah. Instagram too. Yeah. Like my Instagram feed. It's, yeah. It's just business. Yeah, bro. It used to be just girls. Yeah. Now it's <laughs> it used to be girls, bro. Now it's just business. And it's kind yeah. of, it's like a weird passion that I'm starting to find myself in. It's like, man, I'm starting to learn it and then 
Yeah. I'm helping the family. I spread the knowledge to someone else, and I kind of like doing that, being yeah. that guy. So it's cool, man. You just kind of find that. It's crazy. That chasing. that algorithm is fire. You know, are you on TikTok? You be jumping on TikTok and shit? I'm on TikTok what? a little bit, but not yeah. too much. No. No. Bro, that's how I I think we know we're in our 30s, I think. Yeah. Just because uh, yeah. everybody's always yeah. talking about the TikTok algorithm. I'm, like, I like I'm never TikTok, on that though. shit. I yeah. like it, but yeah. I just haven't got sucked all the way in yet. Yeah. But it's cool. Whenever you need something, you just go to that little search bar. Type, type it, it in, in. And it pops up. Dang, bro. Yeah. I need to get more on my TikTok shit. But yeah, bro, I'm super pumped just for even the next year. I feel like uh, both of us kind of set some big goals. I know you were talking about some of uh, your 2023 goals yeah. and some of the things you're trying to consistently do. When the new year comes around, how do you like break down those goals? Do you have like yearly goals or do you have like daily things you want to do? What What does uh, your resolutions look like, I guess? So I break it down. It's obviously 12 months, with this, which is the yeah. year. And then after that, I break that. Whatever those goals are, I break it down into 12 weeks. Yeah. And then whatever those those goals are. Yeah. Break them down into 12, 12 days. Okay. So you just start kind of like reverse engineering it? Reverse engineer. So so what are some of like the daily goals, I guess? So I wouldn't say if it's a daily goal, but more so like rituals. But yeah. just making sure you're doing the daily goals. Making sure yeah. you're doing, you know, the necessary steps. Yeah. Read, read 30 minutes a night or listen yeah. 30 minutes yeah, a night listen. type stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, making sure you're eating the right way. Yeah. Being healthy. Budgeting the right way. Things yeah. like that. And, uh, yeah, man, just putting things on paper, man. Yeah. You got to put it on paper. You got to set that goal for yourself, put a date on it. Yeah. And execute. But I think breaking it down by the 12s, like I will try to, whatever that year goal is, Yeah. try to complete it in 12 days if you could. I'll, yeah. Some days I'll yeah. just go crazy and be like, all right, 12 days. Yeah. Is it going to happen? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. But you'll get close. But you'll get way closer than if you're just yeah. putting it off. So it's almost like you're gamifying it a little bit. You're like yeah. playing a game with yourself. Like, can I? Yeah. Are you yeah, that guy? Myself. Challenge myself. Yeah, bro. Challenge you. But yeah, man, a lot of goals. So one of my main goals right now is uh, I've been kind of shooting vlogs. Yeah. So I got one in the clip ready to go. Yeah. Um, Almost done with another one. And then I'm going to try to get another one done. But I want to get another one done before March 1st. And then with, with every vlog that I release, I got to release some merch as well. Okay. So compound it, and then, you know, once that momentum gets going, then we'll kind of get to some other things, and then, uh, you know, the wrestling momentum as my followers build with that. You know, yeah. The more I win, the better those other things become. So absolutely, just working on that. Well, dude, um, as far as uh, the daily vlog goes, how are you filming? Do you, do you have like a camera? Is it like a selfie stick or yeah? You just got, walking around with. I got a little GoPro, so yeah. If I'm ever with someone, I'll hand it to them, so you get a different, you know, point of view. Yeah. And then if I'm by myself, obviously I'll just flip it around, record myself like that, and then, you know, whenever I can have someone record me in a wrestling room or lifting weights and training and stuff like that, I'll have someone shoot that as well. But okay, the one you got in the chamber, how long is it right now? Do you know? It's about eight minutes. Eight, eight minutes. minutes. Oh, so they're gonna be like shorter clips. Yeah. That's awesome. So dude. my idea behind it is. <clears throat> I like the vlog, but I'm kind of, how can you take a vlog to the next level? So I want it to feel like an episode more than yeah. a vlog. Because the vlogs, they feel like it's just a day to life. Oh, you know, come along with me throughout my day. Yeah. I don't want it to feel like that. I want it to feel more like an episode. Okay. So still working on some kinks, but yeah. I think the thing that I got in my head, I think it's going to work. Yeah. So, and a lot of it, bro, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It's like... uh it's literally, you know, we, we might have, like, expectations for certain things. Yeah. But it's literally, we just got to do it. Yeah, fuck up. For sure. You know, I mean, a good example of that is our podcast. I was, like, three deep, bro. Yeah. Fucked up so much. But now it's a little more organized. We're still fucking up, you know? Yeah. You see Brian over there? Yeah. Something's going on, <laughs> you know? But uh, we got the dog in here. Something's right. going on. But uh, we, we just keep improving, right? And kind keep of uh, assessing the, the data that you get back from yeah. it, right? And just, just trying to be a little bit better. For sure. Just got to do it, man. Put yeah, your foot man. down and do it. And I think with the vlogs, man, it's it's so deep because it's like it's so many little things. Like, yeah, you don't know what I do every day in my life. Yeah, bro. So what are, these kids definitely don't know. Yeah. And now I'm coaching kids, you know, and I'm starting to kind of, you know, invest a little bit more time in them. It's like, man, they're like, coach, how'd your tournament go? Yeah. 
Coach, oh, where you? I'll show you. Where you been for a week? Where you yeah. been for two weeks? You been gone? We've been missing you. Ooh, bro, that would be cool with some like wrestling highlights in the clip too. So it's like well, daily you know tournament. You know I got bro, that. that video of you slamming that kid on his head off the mat, bro. You literally oh. flip this dude <laughs> on his head off the mat. Yeah, poor man. guy, bro. So yeah, just yeah. being able to. Not only is it good for me and help me build my platform, but it's also Absolutely. good for kids, you know. And I ain't gonna say I'm from, you know, I ain't from the sweetest of places. So yeah. I'm from the hood. So yeah. if I can show these kids that back in the hood, and they can realize, like, dang, this dude done wrestled his way to Paris or wrestled yeah. his way to Tokyo. Like, yeah, man, bro. it's so motivating for the kids and for the youth to actually see something. And then, you know, it's helping both parties here. So yeah. Think, well, bro, let me ask you this it. too, because it's all like. You know, it, it's all different where I, I think we all come from. But how many guys from the hood are wrestling? Do you feel like that it, it's something that's growing within like the community? I don't know. You know? I, I think a lot do wrestle. Yeah, but not a lot of them stick to it and continue. Yeah, like, you know, it's it's so many roadblocks along that way. Like yeah, bro. And you could easily, I could have easily took that turn left. Yeah. Just been in yeah. a whole different life, and been in a whole different life. I yeah, might not bro. be here right now. Yeah. So, I don't. I don't. I can't answer that. I don't yeah, know. bro. Well, I, I just like the the idea of being able to spread the sport, you yeah, know, because sure. I think uh, a lot of us found ourselves through yeah. wrestling. You know, I would have been lost without it. Like, for sure. What would I be doing? I don't know. Yeah. But I know that wrestling gave me like this consistent mindset. Right. It, you know, it, it's introduced me to a lot of people, good people that are still in my life. It's given me perspective, you know, and at the end of the day, it's like when you're on the mat, it's just like a fun version of what like real life is like, yeah. you know? So like when I have a rough day, it's a lot like a match, you know, it's uh, like you could get taken down, but you're yeah, going to come back, bro. You, yeah. you know, you, you're going to let this one point you change. The, exactly. Are you going to bounce back or are you just going to sit in your shit? Exactly, bro. But it's crazy. Cause it's like, you're the same. It's like people don't know what you do on yeah. your daily. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't even think my mom knows what really goes on <laughs> in my daily. She knows I wrestles. Yeah, but she don't know what that entails. That's about it. Like, what does that? What does that mean? You know? Yeah. What bro. does that training look like? Does she know you like uh, only almonds and avocados? <laughs> she knows. Yeah, <laughs> she, knows yeah, she knows that piece. She be on me. She be on me. Yeah, is that tough when you go home and it she's is. like, "What do I make?" Yeah, it's, yeah. it's tough. She's like, well, I can't cook nothing for you. What you want me to cook? I'm like, damn. You're right. <laughs> so make me a fruit salad. Like, We're good, right. you know. Just make me a smoothie. Yeah. But it's crazy because, man, like I say, your mom, your your closest people, your closest yeah. friends don't know what really your your day to day life looks like. Like some of my yeah. closest friends in Minneapolis be like, bro, like we know you wrestle, but what's yeah. that look like, bro? Yeah. And like they be like, bro, you don't answer the phone. What what you be doing? Yeah. Bro, I'm in the gym, bro. Yeah, I'm in practice. Like, bro, you were just in the gym this morning, bro. I'm back in the gym, bro. Yeah. I'm How many workouts do you have a day? You feel like it just depends. Some days yeah. it's two, some days it's one. It just depends yeah. what day it is and how I feel, how my body feels. Yeah, but. and that's beyond the coaching too that you're doing, right? Coaching so. on top of that. So like a typical Tuesdays are probably my busiest day. Yeah, Tuesdays and Mondays. Yeah. So Tuesday will be like we'll have practice, ten o'clock, lift at one. Um, I coach high school at like three, so that'd be three to five, and then sometime. You got the kids practice? If I'm feeling it, bro. On I'll top? Go, I'll go 6 to 7.30. Dang, bro. Yeah. Damn, so you're just getting home just like beat, beat. That's a busy day for me. Like yeah. those days are starting to go like, boom, you leave practice, you go home, eat. By the time you get home and eat, you go right to the gym. Yeah. By the time you go home and eat again after the gym, you go right to high school. By the time yeah. you get home again, right to it if you go home after that yeah bro. so some days are crazy but then some days are chill like my wednesdays i kind of use that as my chill day so that's usually like an off day so i usually check on my vending machines make sure everything's good you know fill them back up on a wednesday and then uh maybe i'll go sauna or something just to recover a little bit and then i'll yeah. coach kids at nighttime at like seven or something like that but other than that like wednesdays are my chill day and then friday is pretty chill and the weekend is typically whatever i pretty much want so Nice, dude. Yeah. I feel like you're finding a balance to and yeah, again the more we it's, like poke it's a good around. Balance, yeah. yeah, the more you like poke around at it, try different shit, you know. No, for sure. The the, the more things start to align. So bro, uh the last piece here. We've been manifesting a ton of stuff. We talked about it earlier. Yeah. You gotta read the fucking book. I'm gonna read you it, gotta bro. read the book, bro. I'm gonna stay I'm on top it, of your ass. Thanks, Cause bro. I cause I really think uh even at the place you're at, even back then. 
it's just a good book for for anybody you know looking for a different type of perspective uh, um but bro i, I want to thank you for coming here the second time man okay. i appreciate we it we did this again I it didn't feel it. i was worried it was gonna feel like exactly like the other one but it feels this, way different this one was way different yeah bro. it's like i was thinking that too i'm like yeah it's kind of like you know how you script something you read it yeah and then you try to read it again yeah you're like, damn, am I going to read the same right. shit again? You know? But it was like way different. It was yeah, a very bro. different vibe. I like it. Yeah, it bro. Cool. I'm getting better at it. I'm going to need you back here after you win some of these tournaments. Come you on, know, man. bro. You're going to have to make this an annual thing. You know, yeah, something we'll make every it six months, every three months, whatever. I'll come out to Minnesota sometime, bro. We'll come do on. it in the freezing cold. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll do it. I seen you doing a crazy ass video, Nicole. Where were you yeah. at? Yeah. Um, ooh. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know what I did like that you did? Yeah. Though? Which was fucking. It was. Smooth. Tell me. I tell like me. it, bro. What was it? I don't even know if I can tell it. Tell it. You, um, I think you were at a hotel. Oh, yeah. the That's the Broadmoor here in the Springs. And you swapped the picture? Yeah. So I didn't swap it. We actually, Brian and I, we built, we went in, we took yeah. measurements. We built like a frame that looked exactly like it. Yeah. And then I threw my picture up. And uh, this this uh, Hall of Fame only has people that are like, right. you know, like John Elway, Peyton Manning, it, you know, people that are super notable. Yeah. And so I just built my own little frame and I threw it up. The one place that we did fuck up, though, we, you know, I didn't want to fuck up the wallpaper. I'm not trying to get sued yeah, or anything. Yeah, so I used the little like sticky thing yeah. that, that you put on the back of the frames. And uh, whichever one we picked, dude, just bad news. Uh, so the it way fell. that it fell. Like two days later. And so it was only up there for two days. But I thought it was going to be up there for like Forever. 40 years. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So we fucked up. But that video is hilarious. Bro. Yeah, fuck yeah. That shit was player, bro. I like yeah, it. Yeah, bro. I, I thought about stealing that one, bro. Like that's, yeah. I don't think you know how, well, you probably know. Yeah. But people don't know how big of a marketing tool that could have been. Yeah, like, could have been huge. Think dude. about someone going in there every day looking at that thing on the wall. Yeah. Oh, this guy well, bro, if you ever come up with some ideas, maybe we'll get a crazy one together. Yeah, let's do it, bro. Like, that one was player, bro. I like that one. Yeah, bro. Well, all right, doggy. I've kept you long enough. Thanks for coming back. Uh, we'll we'll do another one here towards the end of the year. We'll make it an annual thing. Uh, let me know if you ever need me, dog. Let's go, baby. As for the fans, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you're still on the video, that's impossible. But hit subscribe. Follow <laughs> Dap. Dap, where can the people follow you? Follow me on IG at DapGo, D-A-P, Go, G-O-L-D. Uh, that's probably where I'm mainly yet. So yeah, yeah, easy uh, enough. And uh, vlogs are dropping soon. Well, Catch this man soon, on the bro. mat, just slamming people on the concrete floors. You know. Let's go, man. Uh, thanks for coming, bro. We'll Let's catch go. you on the next one. Peace.